Support Name Explained on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. Einstein's name and image have really taken on a life of their own. His face has become synonymous with all things science, and his name has become a term unto itself, used to denote anyone who is highly intelligent. It is often used in an ironic manner too. This version of his name even has its own entry in the OED for crying out loud. From posters to t-shirts to internet memes, Einstein has broken into the world of popular culture in a way so few other historical figures have. With the cult status the Einstein brand has achieved, it's very easy to forget that there was a real human being behind it all. Albert Einstein may very be one of the most celebrated scientists in human history, but he was also also a son, husband and father. In these roles, Albert Einstein is a lot less celebrated. In fact, some of the least enjoyable facts about Einstein came from how he acted as a husband to his wives and a father to his children. This is the image of the man we don't often see, though of course for us here, we are most interested in that name of Einstein. Like we've asked of other historical figures so many times now, is there any living relatives of Albert Einstein alive today who still bear that name? Though the first thing we need to ask ourselves is where did that name even come from in the first place? Well, like the man himself, this is a name of Germanic origins. We can see this pretty clearly with that Stein suffix seen in a multitude of Germanic names. We can get the literal meaning of this name when we break it down, as Ein is the German word for one and the Stein suffix relates to rocky slash stony places. This one stone in the name is believed to relate to a location, meaning the original bearers of this name would have had it because of where they lived. The name is actually seen as meaning place enclosed by stone slash place surrounded by a stone wall. Albert was born on the 14th of March 1879 in the city of Olm. At the time this city was part of the kingdom of Württemberg in the larger German empire. Today however is part of the nation of Germany in its south. His parents were Hermann and Pauline Einstein. His father was a salesman and engineer while his mother ran the house household. He was not an only child however. Two years after his birth his parents had a daughter. Maria Meyer Einstein was born in 1881 and she and her older brother seem to have gotten on very well during their lives. Supposedly when Albert first met his little sister the young boy thought she was a toy of sorts and asked where does it have its small wheels? As a child Albert was highly inquisitive to all things around him and had a deep yearning to learn about all kinds of things. He attended elementary school in Munich and while loved to learn, he actually struggled with the school's teaching style. He also struggled to make friends and had speech challenges. These factors and the obsessive detail he put into work in his later life has led many to theorize that Albert was somewhere on the spectrum, with some even deducing he had Asperger's syndrome. We don't know if he did for sure however, but it's easy to understand why many have come to this conclusion. As he grew into a young adult, he came under the tutorage of Max Tullman a family friend and medical student. He is seen as being the man who really ignited Albert's love for science. It was also in his teens he penned his first major paper, dubbed The Investigation of the State of Aether in Magnetic Fields. By the mid-1890s, he was separated from his family as they moved to Milan, while he stayed in Germany to complete his education. He did eventually rejoin them after evading military service when he came of age though. From Germany to Italy, the next nation Einstein would live in would be Switzerland, where he gained admission to the Swiss Federal Institution of Technology in Zurich simply because of how highly he scored on the entrance exam. He seems to have really taken to Switzerland as by the dawn of the 20th century he dropped his German citizenship and became a Swiss citizen. The first few decades of the 20th century were a whirlwind for him and his career. In 1905, he had what is dubbed his miracle year and published four highly influential papers which covered photoelectric effects and more famously his theory of relativity and the much parroted equation of E equals MC squared. This blew up his career and by 1921 he received the Nobel Prize in Physics. After this he travelled across the world and eventually settled in the USA after 
accepting a job at Princeton, New Jersey in 1933. He also left for America due to the rise of the Nazi party in his native Germany and saw the way in which they treated Jews, which he was. During the Second World War, he helped with Navy weapon systems. Something he did not help with, however, was the Manhattan Project. And once Japan was bombed in 1945, and once Japan was bombed in 1945, Einstein became a key supporter in the effort to evade nuclear war. It was also in the 40s he joined the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People after seeing African Americans being treated in the same way Jews were being treated in Nazi Germany. His final years were spent studying time travel and quantum theory in the US before suffering an aneurysm. In hospital, he refused the surgery saying, I want to go when I want. It is tasteless to prolong my life artificially. I have done my share. It is time to go. I will do it elegantly. Albert Einstein died on the 18th of April 1955. Suffice to say, this was just a very brief overview on the life and career of Albert Einstein. Though from just this, it's easy to understand why he has become such a highly respected figure in the world of science and physics. While he was a brilliant scientist, he was not a quite as brilliant husband or father it would seem. Many sources simply brand him as a bad father and husband, who had very little care for his children and wives. And from some of the things he wrote in regards to them, it's very difficult to argue against that point. He was a man driven by his career and science, with everything else taking a backseat in his life, which of course affected his own family heavily. While this was the view for some time, in the more recent years more letters between himself and his family have come to light that portray him differently. Scholars believe these letters show him to actually have more affection for his family than we initially believed, but they also show us that he was all too aware of his own failings as a father and husband. Personally, as someone living in 2022, I find it quite hard to defend or justify the way in which he treated his family the majority of the time. This can all be seen in the relationship he had with his wives. Einstein was married twice. His first wife was called Mileva Malic. She was of Serbian origins and the two met while they were both studying physics in Zurich. The two initially grew close and she seems to have been very much amused to Albert, who would write many of his scientific ideas and theories to her. They would eventually marry on the 6th of January 1903. However, their marriage was a rocky one at the best of times. Albert was often traveling for work and had multiple affairs with other women while they were married. Towards the end of their marriage, things have seemed to got really bitter between the two of them, with Einstein referring to her as an employee whom I cannot fire. He even drafted a contract for his wife to sign if she wanted to carry on their relationship, which had points including that she makes sure he has three regular meals in his room and will stop talking to him if he requested it. While she agreed to this contract, their marriage still came to an end in 1919. This was also the year in which he married his second wife, Elsa Lovental. Elsa Lovental was one of the many women he was having an affair with while he was still married to his wife. She was also his cousin. Yeah, make of that as you wish. She was actually born with the surname of Einstein but became a Lovental through her first marriage. So when she married her cousin Albert, she once again reclaimed her maiden name. A fun though slightly gross name fact. This once again seems to be a mere marriage of convenience, and like with his first wife, Albert continued to have extramarital relationships. Elsa was aware of this fact but stayed with him, saying, Such a genius should be irreproachable in every aspect, but nature does not behave this way. Where she gives extravagantly, she takes away extravagantly. Their marriage continued until her own death in 1936. How he treated his two wives is fairly hard to defend, and even Albert himself didn't seem to be able to defend his own actions. In one letter he was writing to the son of a friend who recently died, he said in this letter, What I admired in your father is that, for his whole life, he stayed with only one woman. This is a project which I grossly failed twice, which does show us a degree of remorse in the way he treated his spouses. Though of course in the quest to maintain that name of Einstein, it all depends on his children. So did Albert have any kids with either of these wives? Well, frankly for us, the answer is yes. Einstein had three children. 
that we know of anyway. And all of these he had with his first wife of Maliva. Though he did have a stepdaughter through his second wife Elsa's first marriage. She was called Margot and Albert seemed to be very fond of her, saying, I love her as much as if she were my own daughter, perhaps even more so. Anyway, these three biological children were Liesel, Hans, and Edward Einstein. That first daughter of Liesel seems to be shrouded in a mystery. We actually only found out about her existence in the 1980s, way after Albert had died. It's believed she was born in 1902 before they were married, and what became of her we don't seem to be too sure. Some believe she was left with Maliva's family to be raised, while others theorize she died young of scarlet fever. Whatever the case, she's a dead end in regards to the legacy of the Einstein name. Albert's youngest son of Edward is something of a dead end too. While he didn't die in infancy, his life was difficult. He was born in 1910 and was always a sickly child. Edward had not only physical health issues but mental health issues too. Albert wrote about him saying, my little boy's condition depresses me greatly. It is impossible that he would become a fully developed person. Even contemplating at point if life would have been easy if he was never born. As Edward grew older, his mental health worsened. By the 1930s, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and sent to an asylum in Zurich. Albert around this time emigrated to the USA and while the two kept in contact, Edward never saw his father again. Dying in 1965, spending the last three decades of his life in the asylum. From this, I'm sure you can gather that Edward had no children either. This means that any hopes for the Einstein name and legacy to live on fall solely on his middle child of Hans. And luckily for us, he did. Hans Albert Einstein was born in 1904, and it seems he had mixed memories and feelings in regards to his father. He has said of his dad that he would put aside his work and watch over us for hours, but also said about his dad Albert that probably the only project he ever gave up on was me, which is just one of the saddest things I've ever heard. However, Albert kept in close contact with Hans, even after he divorced his mother and Albert confided in his son. Hans would actually follow in his father's footsteps in multiple ways. One of those ways was the fact he went to the same school as his father, becoming a civil engineer, which his father thought was a disgusting idea. This ultimately led to a large split in their relationship, one that seems to have only been patched up when Hans joined his father in the USA in the 1930s. Father and son both worked in the USA in their respective fields and kept a somewhat decent relationship, with Hans dying in 1973. In his life, however, Hans had three biological children and one adopted daughter, Bernhard, Klaus, David, and Evelyn. These are, of course, the grandchildren of Albert, though it seems that only one of these three biological children survived into adulthood, that being Bernhard Caesar Einstein. Bernhard was born in 1930 in Germany while his father Hans lived there, but emigrated to the States when Hans did. It seems Bernhard followed in his father's footsteps and too became an engineer. Bernhard has shared memories of time spent with his grandfather. Apparently, Albert quite enjoyed being a grandfather father despite how he acted as an actual father. Bernhard remembers fishing with Albert, saying, Grandfather would only allow me to go fishing if I ate all the fish I caught. So I caught one fish early in the morning and ate it for breakfast. And going on to say his grandfather usually said very little to me during those outings, but on one particular afternoon, one on which there was practically no wind, he became talkative. He liked the calm and claimed that calm was the highest challenge to the sailor. We went no further than about a kilometre in the three hours as we were out. Bernhard died in 2008, however he left five children behind. Thomas, Paul, Ted, Miller and Charlie, born from 1955 to 1971. From what I can tell, they are all still alive today and still bear that name of Einstein, though Mira has since married and double barreled her name with her husband. This means that the Einstein name is still alive with his great grandchildren, and some even have their own children, being great great grandkids of Einstein. These five 
great-grandchildren seem to have all taken on different walks in life. Thomas has become a physician, Paul a musician who now plays his great-grandfather's violin, Ted works in masonry and construction, Mira is too a musician, and Charlie went on to be a spokesperson for a Swiss hospital. Charlie seems to have spoken most publicly about his great-grandfather and bearing his name, saying, sometimes it appears to me that people think he is some kind of god, therefore it feels like many look upon me as if I was the great-grandson of God. To be honest, that's an extremely weird and alien feeling to me. And upon being asked how he and his siblings grapple with that last name, he said, we Einsteins solve problems in highly unconventional ways, in our own ways, which is a fitting legacy for the name of a highly unconventional person. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and also join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain, both of which will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.